Hello team and welcome back to Modern Campus Network Management Techniques video series. Now we hit challenges and evolution in video one and then classic NMS tools in video two. Now you explore modern NMS tools. Now this includes SOAR and SIM solutions, scripting and automation tools, and artificial intelligence or AI and machine learning or ML. Let's get started. Okay, I talked about logging mechanisms like syslog in the previous section. Well, think about this. Dozens, hundreds, maybe thousands of devices all sending various logging information in various formats. Syslog, packet info, SNMP traps, system status and traffic statistics, user accounting, ACL logging, device tracking, deep packet inspection or DPI and telemetry, and the list goes on. Are you going to wade through those dozens of log types from thousands of devices and try to derive something useful? Oof. So you deploy a security information and event management or SIM system, which can collect and aggregate information across disparate systems and log types. This enables it to correlate and analyze this data often in real time and then provide forensics information and alert IT staff, perhaps taking corrective action autonomously. These systems identify deviations from the norm to take some appropriate action. These deviations are identified by a simple rule-based method or some type of statistical correlation engine. The challenge is that SIM systems require tuning to ensure they understand the difference between normal and abnormal. Now, this tuning can be a distraction from your main objectives. Keep the system securely running, right? And this brings us to the topic of Security Orchestration and Automation and Response, or SOAR systems. Now the terms SIM and SOAR are sometimes used interchangeably, but there are key distinctions. SOAR enables you to collect inputs monitored by your security operations or SecOps team, including information from SIM systems and other technologies. Now this enables you to orchestrate tedious, repetitive tasks, automate incidents response workflows, and to ensure a more efficient response, helping with case management, triage, and remediation. See, SIM intelligence is largely focused on tech information and events. SOAR unifies this technology with people and processes. It may have the intelligence to auto-tune the SIM system to reduce false positives and improve anomaly identification. Understand that this hard line I've drawn between SIM and SOAR often blurs in the real world. Both may end up having AI and machine learning along with other overlapping features. I just want to emphasize here that these modern capabilities are largely based on artificial intelligence and machine learning. AI does the analytics, which uses machine learning models to identify potential problems, outcomes, and risk, both proactively and reactively. These AI ML systems are then used to identify best solutions to ensure more continuous secure network operations and improve your situational awareness. These tools are available to help manage traditional network systems, are often cloud-based, and may be able to integrate solutions from various vendors. But it would be nice if most of this integration and deployment legwork was done for you, right? For example, Aruba's Artificial Intelligence Operations, or AI Ops, is an integral part of Aruba's Edge Services Platform, or ESP. Now, the amount of data available to this system is huge. AI Ops leverages all your data, as previously discussed. Now, this is fed into intelligent, low-level models which enrich this raw data and serve it up to high-level machine learning models. The high-level models analyze this information and identify root causes, recommendations, and automations. Adding greatly to this power is anonymized peer data from thousands of solutions, telemetry, support cases, and more, all fed into these models for vastly increased intelligence and improved machine learning models. It also allows for quicker OS and software enhancements. Now let's take a closer look at that AI engine. You get purpose-built telemetry from Aruba devices continuously enhanced by Aruba domain knowledge and ML models. Now, this includes states, stats, and events from over 1 million network devices, fingerprinting from over 55 million client devices and apps, 
and a huge install base of configurations. Machine learning models will first create clusters of peer groups of deployments with the same environmental factors for cross-network benchmarking. These machine learning models also create baseline behaviors for many key performance indicators or KPIs. Using these KPIs along with environmental factors and configuration, ML algorithms can predict the outcome of configuration changes. The baseline models can also identify deviations from normal operation at different levels. This is important. Static anomaly thresholds don't accurately represent how real-life networks behave. Now, these models are continuously retrained by the ever-enhancing telemetry from newer APs, clients, and verticals for ever-increasing accuracy. With all that data from machine learning models, AI Insights can then proactively detect anomalies take actions to make recommendation, and validate results. Let's look at an example. An AIOps use case to optimize per bandwidth transmit power for a WLAN environment. Now, all pertinent factors are considered with the data inputs you see here. This is all fed into the AI process, which uses AI and modeling honed over thousands of installations. Thus, the system derives optimal minimum and maximum transmit power settings for wireless access points, or APs. You get maximum Wi-Fi coverage per floor, building, and campus in an optimized user experience. Now, the deployment will then automatically respond to changes in the environment to maintain these optimizations. The cool thing is how flexible these modern management techniques can be. Today's developer tools have the power to share information, interact with third-party applications, and implement those changes. Everything done automatically. Now, the Python language, the REST API, and webhook communications are fundamental to building automated intelligent edge solutions. Now, the bottom line is, all these tools are used to integrate and share information between applications. This enables endless possibilities, send interactive messages, automatically open troubleshooting tickets, request firewall actions, uh, control HVAC and lighting systems, interact with IoT systems, and more. Webhooks enable apps to share real-time information with other apps. It's like modern syslog in that it pushes info to some other app, a bit like network devices can push syslog info to a central repository. It's a hook because it provides a way to change web page or app behavior with callbacks, which can be maintained by third-party developers. It's a web hook because it receives calls via HTTP post messages. With webhook, the server-side app pushes formatted information to a client, which manages the data, interprets it, and performs some action. An API is a logical interface that defines app-to-app -app calls and requests, how to make them, and the data formats and conventions to use. One way to implement APIs is using representational state transfer or REST. This stateless client-server architecture provides a uniform interface and a hierarchical structure that is perfect for enabling compute network interoperability. It's the point of contact for scripting network devices reporting device status, and defining device settings. In the past, I've used scripting languages like VBScript and others to automate configurations of several dozen networking devices. It works, but interfacing with the device command line interface, or CLI, requires complicated filters to sort through content returned by the show and other commands. And if the OS changes, your filters might require updates. But the REST API uses structured data so programs can easily search, interpret, and modify configuration settings and status. But once you understand how to use the API, you can create scripts to automate network configuration, monitoring, and troubleshooting, especially when combined with other cloud-based or intelligent edge-based tools. REST uses familiar HTTP, HTTPS for the communication protocol. The management station is a REST client from which you deploy scripts to interact with some network device via basic HTTP commands to create, read, update, and delete device resources. The request and response information in these REST API calls 
uses JavaScript object notation or JSON format, a standard media type with which developers are quite familiar. Now, the REST API defines resources, each of which is a uniform resource identifier or URI that a client can access. For example, a switch that has the IP address 10.1.1.1 has the URI shown here, which lists VLANs on the switch. So a REST client can contact this URI to obtain information about the list of VLANs or add to it. Resource URIs follow a hierarchical structure. A resource can also be a container for other resources. For example, the system VLANs resource contains multiple VLAN resources each identified with an ID. Now, the same concept holds true for the system interfaces resource, which is a container for multiple interface IDs and for several other resources on the switch. The REST v1 systems interfaces resource stores physical interfaces, VLAN interfaces, and loopback interfaces. The REST v1 system ports also stores physical interfaces and also stores VLAN interfaces, loopback interfaces, and link aggregations, or LAGs. Every client REST request is associated with a REST method, which is an HTTP command. A GET command reads an existing resource, perhaps a list of VLANs or statistics about a particular VLAN. A POST command creates a resource, like creating a new VLAN. A delete command removes a resource, like deleting a VLAN, and a put command replaces attributes for an existing resource, perhaps changing VLAN settings. You can automate tasks using a programming language like Python. It is popular and works well with automation and orchestration tools. You can use Python to write REST API and other HTTP calls. Python is a high-level programming language. One of the design goals of Python was readability of the code. Now, this extensive use of white space makes Python code look very clear. Python is an interpreted language, so it executes instructions directly without having to compile those instructions. Python interpreters are available for Windows, Linux, and Mac OS, and more. One benefit of Python is expandability using custom-made modules. No wonder this is such a popular language. Now, this is an example of Python code. Note how blocks in the code use the same indentation, which makes the code easier to read. As an example, the Aruba OS CX-based infrastructure and cloud management solutions include some fairly impressive network analytics, which you can access via the Aruba Central Management Platform and by writing your own Python scripts. Because it's all based on an open REST API, it's easy to add new capabilities. You can monitor system health statistics with root cause assistance, gathering things like CPU utilization and more. Use network analytics to assist with layer 1, layer 2, and layer 3 issues. Track the state of OSPF neighbors, STP links, and collect insight on change. Security analytics lets you develop agents to analyze network traffic passing through the core and learn about anomalies like east-west traffic and perhaps traffic patterns that shouldn't be taking place, like uh, camera traffic going out to a different network segment. Application visibility lets you leverage counters to match traffic going to applications in the cloud or data center to discover anomalies in application performance, cloud, or on-prem. Use network optimization to leverage all this network and performance knowledge to dynamically insert policies for optimization and take action like redirecting destination routes based on link status. It's pretty cool. Another popular scripting tool is PowerShell, an interpreted language originating from Windows. Developers can import custom modules and combine multiple scripts, which makes it easier to manage and maintain code. Windows PowerShell is the original version, developed for the Windows operating system using the .NET framework. PowerShell Core is a newer, open-source version of PowerShell available for Windows, Linux, and the Mac OS. PowerShell Core is cross-platform, so one script will run on all supported operating systems. Okay, 
We talked about automation with scripting, so let's move on to orchestration. Ansible, Puppet, Stackstorm, and Salt are examples of configuration management or CM automation and or orchestration tools. They provide an environment to automate provisioning and configuring IT resources such as VMs, containers, applications, and patches. They all help the DevOps team to automate and shorten software development cycles from integration to test to release to deployment. Automation and CM tools change the way departments work together and change the human workflow. Application developers can write, test, and deploy applications without having to wait for the operations department to supply resources. Well, let's take a brief look at each of these tools. Ansible automates tedious admin tasks. You define or discover an inventory of target devices and groups. Now, Ansible connects to those targets and executes a playbook, a set of instructions written in a so-called YAML file. Ansible gets in, does its thing, and gets out. Puppet's client-server approach tracks each managed device's current state versus a desired state and the changes required to reach that state. You use Puppet code to create manifests, hierarchical, reusable modules. Perhaps a module for uh, Apache web servers and a module for Microsoft SQL servers and more. Each module features a main manifest program, a collection of reusable classes or code blocks that can set up technology stacks and build a complete system configuration. Now, Stackstorm is a pluggable rule and execution engine that reacts to system events with a simple action or a complex workflow. It can rely on sensors, Python plugins that integrates the host system with a set of triggers, actions, and rules, workflows, and packs. Aruba leverages this powerful REST API-based system to do some pretty amazing things. In one example, the network becomes an intelligent fabric that dynamically responds to and accommodates changes in application needs. SaltStack is the company that creates Salt, a powerful distributed configuration management system to execute commands and query data on remote nodes, or minions, to maintain them in some defined state. Are certain CLI commands on the switch? Does it have the latest patch? Are the correct security services running? The hub and spoke architecture and lightweight zero MQ message bus make this very scalable. Now, it'll take you and your organization some time to ramp up on development and use of these orchestration tools, but there are quite a few benefits, starting with reusability. You create reusable building blocks that can be used in multiple stacks. Speed. Developers can validate their code on non-critical systems with fast feedback loops to catch issues earlier. Uptime. Ensure changes are tested against downstream dependencies to prevent unforeseen failures in production. And you've got a common workflow, which ensures that all changes are tested and approved with the same rigor and speed. The configuration management tool ensures changes are only deployed once and properly approved. You got increased reliability. Uh, for instance, after integration with HPE OneView, bare metal servers are configured the same way every time and maintain infrastructure compliance with automated rolling upgrades. You've got automation and compliance, automatically ensure that code matches the state of the infrastructure and automatically test that systems remain in compliance. Automatically test, review, build and deploy those changes on commit. And that's it for video three in this Modern Campus Network Management Techniques series, where you explored SOAR and SIM systems, scripting, AI, and ML. Next, I'd like to show you some examples of modern NMS technology based around Aruba's Edge Services platform, or ESP. There's a lot of cutting-edge technology to explore, so I hope you come on back for the fourth video in this series.